This looks like one of those radar modules. It's a Hilink HLK LD2410C. This is a human presence and distance radar module that can measure up to five meters away. I haven't used one of these before, but I wanted to test it out because I'm wondering if it can make a good substitute for an infrared PIR type sensor, which sometimes those are slow to respond. If you're using it as a motion activated light, you walk into the area that's supposed to detect you and it may or may not turn on the light. You may have to move around extra to get it to trigger. So I thought I would try this thing out and see how it goes as well, because you don't even have to be moving around. It's supposed to detect humans stationary as well. And I think this is a bunch of headers because I ordered those and yeah, it's easy to tell when you've had these before. And these are two row 90 degree headers. I'm running low on these. Sometimes I want to put something like this on a board so I can just have a bunch of signals and power plugging from one board into a receptacle on another, especially if there's a lot of control signals like relays, solenoids, motors. So this will fit nicely in one of those part storage trays, and I'll probably be good for five or ten years with this. This one has the info on it. It is solder paste. I've never ordered this kind of thing from AliExpress. I've only ever bought it from Amazon or places like Mauser. And this is a relatively small amount, but since it does have a shelf life, that's probably way more than I will be able to use up. So it says type HXP603, and it's not just your standard tin lead. As far as I know, it's not temperature stable or anything, but I could be wrong. But I figured if I use it up relatively quickly, hopefully it will work. My other supply, including some in a jar and some in a syringe, it's long past expiry. I even tried rejuvenating it with flux, but it's almost like concrete, so time for this to go. SOP28 to dip 0.65. This is one of those spring-loaded IC sockets, and the pins survived without being bent. I wanted to add that to the collection of similar sockets for various sizes and pin pitches of other surface mount chips. And that's for small chips like this, so you can prototype with them before you have to commit them to some other PCB. Or if you're not planning to make a PCB, but you can only get a chip in this sort of surface mount package, you can still work with it. Even if you make a board out of something like this and you put sockets and you just even temporarily dock that into some headers just to try something out semi-permanent for whatever purpose. So you push down, the pins open up, you drop the chip in, let it go, and it pushes down on all the pins and then you can make contact with the chip. Then there's this. Another high link part, HLK 5M05, and this is an AC to DC switching power supply. Universal input around 100 to 240 volts, 50 or 60 hertz, and the output is 5 volts DC at 1 amp, which is 5 watts. So a little plug-in module, AC in, DC out. In the data sheet for this, they have certain recommendations for both the input AC and the output DC side, such as some sort of bulk electrolytic capacitance on the output and on the input, along with a fuse, they suggest an AC rated capacitor and for surge suppression, an MOV. And if the installation of this in a product may require emissions compliance, there may be use for a common mode choke, but I'm just gonna power this up as it is in a test setup and see how it looks. 
Well, this is not a problem waiting to happen. I'm going to plug this in and there's a switch that's currently off on the power bar. And the pins on this power supply fit into a breadboard. So the AC wires are going into here and they are insulated. And the DC output, I have a six ohm, 100 watt resistor. And I have this as a current meter in series. So the output will get a load when I plug in the other current meter lead. So the first test applying AC with no load and connecting the load. So 0 0.77 amps. I'll turn that all off again for now. So five volts out divided by about six ohms, 0.83 amps. So give or take with, I didn't measure the exact resistance and all this wiring. Now I turned it back on, keep the load on 5.03 volts at about three quarters of max load. Turn it off again, since I don't trust this setup as I move things around. Now I put a scope probe, so if I turn it on again and connect this load, it says the top is 5.08 or so volts. AC couple at three quarters load, we have 370 or so millivolts peak to peak of this noise or ripple. And the scope can't really lock on to any specific frequency with all of this. Now I'm just going to take away the load resistor. So now no load, open output, 5.12 volts. Back to AC, with no load, it's actually around 600 or so millivolts peak to peak. So I guess it stabilizes better with some sort of load at least. And I'm gonna turn this off before something goes wrong. So some more test stuff like this IC socket, this presence and distance sensor I want to do some project experiments with. Don't know what I'm gonna do with the five volt power supply, but I'm sure it's got lots of uses especially if I use it as the 5 volt input on this dual rail plus and minus 12 power supply for some op amp type circuits. And I plan to use this solder paste sooner than later so it doesn't land in the toxic graveyard. Thanks to supporters of the channel for helping make this possible.